we're up here in between Sharon, Tennessee and Dresden, Tennessee off Highway 89. I just got through leaving the nursing home here in Dresden, one of them, where my grandmother stayed, Miss Aldell Jackson, for about, I think in total she stayed up here about 12 or 13 years. And within three to four years of that, her dementia started really, really increasing towards getting worse and worse and worse to the point that eventually she just lost all senses of reality and not knowing who she was, where she come from, didn't know her own children. But anyways, this tornado come probably within a thousand yards and right here, some of the damage right here that it, that it, uh, devastatively done that was uh, horrible I just got through coming uh, from Sharon going towards Dresden and uh, I seen something that I've only seen one other time before which was the big high electrical uh, lines were the big lines go down through the fields and go down through various places the high voltage lines I haven't uh, I haven't seen those towers knocked down other than one other time and that was during Katrina down in southern Mississippi just to give you some sort of a, a brief idea towards the intensity that these storms had not only up in Kentucky but also over in Illinois, also over in Missouri, um, Arkansas, and I didn't know this until this morning that it actually hit in areas over towards, uh, over toward down or down towards Shelby County, Memphis, and in towards Mississippi. I think that was more straight line winds. I don't know for sure, but they still. Uh, got some damage down there around two below Mississippi, somewhere down there below Memphis. But I'm coming in here to uh, Dresden, Tennessee, and, and some of the uh, some of the sites that I'm looking at is just absolutely unbelievable in the force and the power that Mother Nature can can bring upon can bring upon to the planet in regards towards all of this. Um, this was a good friend of mine right here that uh, sold me my culvert that uh, that I turned into a storm shelter Mr. Needham and it looks like his property is destroyed too as well I don't know if the house I see where the doors got knocked in but I don't know if a couple windows got knocked out right there all the barn back over here to the right hand side it looks like it's totally destroyed you can see windows broken in behind the house that was his office right there anyways whenever you see such destruction as this it uh, or to me it it's it's a reality check in understanding just exactly how weak and how I hate to use the word insignificant but in comparison towards one person not being able to push down a tree or possibly even 20 people being able to push down a tree and in some instances it may take a hundred people or even a hundred people couldn't push down a tree depending upon the size of the tree but it just to me it it, it gives people the understanding toward just exactly how strong and how powerful that stuff like this can actually be. And like I said, this was the first time that I had driven down into this area since this occurred Friday, late Friday night. And they claim that downtown, downtown, uh, 
the downtown area is basically closed off unless you got business being in there towards uh, towards it being devastated around the courthouse in the downtown district. It's uh, remarkably sad whenever you see such horrible, horrible de de devastation like this. And of course, it's only because of the strength and the will of the people that brings us together to where we can actually unify in being able to help one another in crises such as this, regardless whether it be a tornado, a fire, a flood, or etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's uh, it's difficult to watch and look at. It's very heart wrenching in knowing that a lot of these people have worked all their lives, all their lives, and now sudden, suddenly, all of a sudden, within a matter of a, a few seconds or a few minutes, everything has been shattered, broken destroyed, taken away. I got to looking more so over there, pretty close to where I live, on the edge of Weekly County, pretty close to the Obion River, where the line of the tornado come from Kenton, Tennessee. And um, I thought I was within a couple miles of the actual tornado that hit. But after me re-examining what had went on, I figured now I was less than a half a mile from the actual edge of the edge of the damage. Uh, it looked like that it had picked itself up a little bit down in the bottoms area. Uh, it's it scraped the edge of Sidonia just a little bit. It looked like that it may have picked itself up, but then as it was nearing Sharon, it looked like that's where it started dropping itself back down. And of course, this here is the full blunt of the blow pertaining to how that it has just absolutely desecrated this area of Weekly County right here at, at the city limits of uh, city limits, inside the city limits of Dresden. There's no doubt uh, whenever they talked on the radio pertaining to how devastating that it was over here, towards it being at least a hundred structures or more that was damaged and probably two-thirds to eighty percent of those was uh, in, unrepairable. There's no doubt they was not exaggerating that one bit, not even one bit. Over here, it looks like I don't know, it's just so massive of amount of damage. I'm gonna pull over just a little bit so I can so I can move my camera around because you're not supposed to be you're not supposed to be uh, driving and operating the camera at the same time. So I'm gonna pull over here just a little bit and I'm gonna get a better picture of what I'm talking about to describe to the people to describe to people in, in, in just exactly what I'm looking at here A lot of gawkers, and I can't say nothing about gawking because I myself have turned into a gawker. But uh, I think people aren't so much being nosy as they are wondering if there's anything that they can do to possibly help or better the situation. I'm going to go ahead and pull my phone off since I've stopped. But you can see over to the way far far side of all that over there that it's just unbelievable amount of just damage where it just hit that whole whole community back in there and just devastated it.
And like I was saying a while ago, what makes it twice as bad is that we're right here at Christmas. And so many people have worked all their lives. Hey, ma'am, did you get any damage? No, we didn't. We're from, we're actually from um, the Rutherford area. So the Rutherford? Yeah. Y'all didn't get no damage in Rutherford? No, we didn't. Kenton did. Yeah, Kenton did. Kenton got hit hard. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So you're down there around the uh, uh, China Grove area. That's right. Yeah. I Our see. church is on China Grove. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I recognized who you was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did they ever open that store back up? No, they didn't. Is anybody ever going to open that store back up? Not that I know of. Wow. No plans to right now. <laughs> it really devastated this area up here, it didn't did. it? It did. It did. Our men were up here yesterday. Who was? I said some of our men were up here yesterday helping. Right. They were they were in Kenton in the morning and came up here in the afternoon. It's hard to know where to go. Yeah, it's, who to help first. <laughs> right. It's it's hard to know who to talk to about being able to help. I mean, I think a lot of people that come up here, they're not just being nosy. They're actually interested in how that they could possibly help. Yeah. I know that's my purpose for being here. I ain't sure. here just to be nosy. But uh, it's absolutely remarkable whenever you see the power of Mother Nature. I know. In well, what the power the, of God. In what that it can actually yeah. do. You know it. I believe, this is my own analogy of it, I believe that America has turned its back so far on God to the point that God is no longer got America in his hollow hand towards favoring to, to, uh, to society because my grandmother used to always say that if you bite the hand that feeds you long enough, Eventually, that hand had quit feeding you. Yeah. And I truly believe that God has lifted his protection off of the American people to a certain degree, to a certain yeah. extent. Uh -huh. And this is the repercussions of it. Yeah. Because if you, if, you, if you really get to looking in the Bible, mm -hmm. where the storm come upon to the, to the ship that Jesus was in, uh -huh. you have you have to kind of take things in the right perspective that that more than likely wouldn't be the hand of God directly towards creating that storm. But indirectly, in a roundabout way, uh -huh. I feel like that God allowed for Satan to create that storm uh -huh. because God wouldn't God wouldn't would want to be trying to destroy his own son out there on a boat. So the point that I'm trying to make is this storms can either be intensified by the works of the dark forces uh -huh. or it can be allowed by the works of the good forces to allow the bad forces to do what, what it's doing. And of course, you know, as well as I do, a lot of this stuff we brought upon to ourselves because of, of not only our sinful nature, uh -huh. but because of draining all the oil resources out of the ground uh -huh. and, and, and putting all the carbon dioxide up into the atmosphere. I mean, the, they have proven that, that, that the uh, that the that the atmosphere is a whole lot more hotter now, and because of of the uh, environment up there being hotter, that's the reason why the environment can hold more moisture. Okay. And that's the reason why that whenever it rains, it just don't rain; it just comes a freaking flood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It releases it all at one yeah. time, or that's how yeah. science has yeah. a way of explaining it. Right. Well, we just. Ultimately, God is in control, and He, what He, you know, He allowed this. Yes, He allowed it. And it, and it, you know, it makes people think. Well, there has to be a reason because we we, we keep getting bombarded by all these occurrences. By the way, I'm recording this. Um, it has to be a reason why that that these occurrences continue to keep bombarding us on a on a routine of a level, but now it's intensifying towards getting more mm -hmm. bad luck and they're intensifying as far as being stronger mm -hmm. because I don't know if you uh, watched uh, TV or not, but that one storm that come up through Jonesboro, Arkansas and come over through uh, Real Foot Lake and Sandberg and jumped on over into Kentucky. Uh -huh. 
They claim that that storm beat all time records really? towards the longest tornado that was actually on the ground being destructive, tearing up everything in its path uh -huh. for almost 250 miles. That, that was unreal. It really was. Almost 250 miles. Yeah. And, and God, you think this is bad, which it is. Could you only imagine what Mayfield, Kentucky looks like if you if you was to go up into Mayfield, Kentucky yeah, and look I around? It's really bad. I think that's where the biggest t uh, death toll is going to be. I think there's going to be like 75 or 80 people really? that's going to come out of that er one area because of I that see. factory and stuff. Yeah. It is so sad. It is. But man <laughs> has, yeah, like you said, man is... Kind of brought this upon himself because of him not wanting to live a life of righteousness. That's right. There's so much sin in the world now, especially in America, because America has basically turned its back on God. And like my grandmother used to always say, well, if you continue to bite the hand that feeds you, eventually the hand will quit feeding you. Yeah. Eventually that hand will, 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 will stop protecting you. That hand will quit blessing you. In other words, he'll bring cursings into your life. He'll bring cursings into your pro into your land. He'll bring cursings up into your community. And that's this is the repercussions of it. Yeah. It's sad. That's why it says it, that's why it says it's sorrows. Yeah. God still has a way for his people. I mean, we may we have been affected, you know, there's our people do get hit with these bad luck. Things too. Yeah. But you know, we just we believe God allowed it, and we, He provides for His people, and we, you know, this is a way of us reaching out. Sure. To the hurting people. Absolutely. This is a way for us to, to minister to them so, in one form or fashion. If it's not nothing no more than picking up a plank and moving it or yeah. driving a nail or actually witnessing to them and right. telling them about Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just amazing. I don't remember if, if this was a whole community back in here that's caused so much destruction right here. Well, there was a, there was a number of houses along here. It was. Yeah. I don't remember. I know they said that it got the corner store up there. There was a store right up there on the yeah. corner that, that had a meal and also sold gas. Yeah. Yeah, that's gone. That's gone. Mm -hmm. And I was told downtown Dresden... That it looks kind of like this right here. Really? I see. Well, we, I know our men didn't get, they were going to go, they were going to go over to Paris, Tennessee, Paris. Did Paris get hit too? Yes. Actually, one of the Mennonite families there lost their house. They did. And um, they're actually ready to rebuild tomorrow. But they were on their way over there when they came upon this and they just stopped here and um, helped here yesterday then. Right. So. Well, how bad is it in Paris? Well, I I have not heard more than just that one family that got hit. I don't know if there's more or not. Sure. We were actually going to go over there and look around. Sure. And um, so, yeah. From what I can tell by looking at, at, at different tattletale signs from it, it looks like in some areas it got really, really big and wide. That was covering a whole area, like a half mile area or maybe three quarters of a mile area that was doing a lot of destruction. But then there was other areas that it looked like it had shrinked or shrunk up yeah. to the point that it only hit like one house. Right. right. So in other words, it was it was steadily growing and, in, and, yeah. and shrinking and growing and shrinking. And at the same time, you know, it was moving back and forth. It ain't like it's got a mind like us. Right. Yeah. It would have... I, I would... <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in its path, but I would want to see. I would want to watch it happen. <laughs> Have you ever seen a tornado up close? No, I haven't. It's breathtaking. Uh, I, yeah, and unfortunately, they often come in the dark, and you can't see them. They claim the ones that come in the dark are like twice as likely to do this type of destruction. Really? I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, I don't know either. But I do know this. Friday afternoon... I was outside working around the house. I lived down towards Hop Inn. You know where Hop Inn is? No, I don't. On the other side of Sedonia, down there by the Old Bine River. Oh, okay, yeah. On Highway 89 yeah. going toward uh -huh. Kenton. Yeah. And it got super, super hot, like 76, 78 yeah, degrees. And all of a sudden, I just started breaking out in a sweat. 
And it was as if suddenly, all of a sudden, I went into a sauna. I don't know if you've ever been in a sauna or not, no, but a sauna is full of steam. Yeah. But it had that steamy type feeling. And I knew then, I got this gut feeling. As a matter of fact, I even posted it on, on one of my uh, YouTube channels. I go, people should be just as concerned about what's going on right now with the temperatures being like it is as they would be if, if it was an oncoming hurricane. Okay. And I had no idea that the tornadoes was already starting to build over in Arkansas oh, yeah. on the other side of the river. Oh, I had no idea that that was occurring. Uh -huh. But God showed me something. Do you know anything about science? I, no, I, I, I'm not really a science person. Okay. You know what atoms are? Oh, I hear about them. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I don't understand them. Okay. The, the, the world's full of atoms. Okay. You know, you can uh -huh. just wave your hand back and forth, and you've, you're waving your hand through atoms. Okay. God showed me that right before something like this hits, the molecules and the atoms get to working so fast in the atmosphere okay. that that's what creates that steam, that heat. Oh, okay. Kind of like friction. When you rub your hands together, you know how your hands get hot? Yeah. Friction? Okay. It's the same thing pertaining to the atmosphere that whenever the atoms start working real, real fast, the atoms and the molecules start going crazy. It heats up and it gets real steamy like, uh -huh. and that's a number one absolute tattletale that something's fixing to really go crazy. Yeah. And that's what happened because I've, I've experienced this now two or three different times. Uh, the couple of tornadoes down in Jackson, okay. uh, one in Lexington, one hit in 99, one hit in 2000 and, I think it was in uh, 2003 that come up through Jackson and over to Lexington. And every time in the winter, in the cold cold time of the, the season, whenever a, whenever a bad storm was fixing to start brewing, it would get super, super hot. And all of a sudden, the humidity level would jump up to 100%. And like I said, it, it almost felt like that you was in, a, in a, some sort of a, a steam bath or a sauna or something. Uh -huh. And, and what God showed me about that was the molecules. Right. Yeah. Now, you can believe that or not. God. And that's my scientific way of looking at it, too. Right. Yeah. I'm mixing a little scientific with supernatural pertaining to the, the, the spirituality side of it. Right. But it's, it's, either way you look at it, no matter what causes it, is the bottom line pertaining to atmospheric conditions and i think a lot of it also has to do with mankind towards the sin right. because it talks about the sorrows mm -hmm. sorrow great sorrows will fall up onto the planet in the last days because of the wickedness of man correct right it does well what is a sorrow what is a sorrow what is a sorrow a sorrow is the opposite of happiness right, right. a sorrow is the opposite of good time something good right so the sorrow is bad. So if you look at America, all the abortions, mm -hmm. all the divorces, mm -hmm. all the problems with our politicians, being $30 trillion in debt, yeah. all the illegals coming over the border, yeah. going to war and can't win a war after being in there for 20 years and walking out and leaving over $80 billion worth of uh, equipment over there. And then within 11 days, the same group of people that you was fighting for 20 years winds up taking back over the property or the land again. I mean, we're, we're just having catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe, all the gun violence, all the drug overdoses, all the wickedness that's going on pertaining to uh, uh, people getting out here and, and going on massacre shootings and killings, you, you have to start asking yourself the question, why is this happening? And the bottom line is this. We are no longer in the hollow hand of God towards God protecting us like he did our ancestors before us. Right. And the reason why is because of our lifestyle. Yeah. The way that we're treating one another. Comes down, we need to make a personal choice. That's it. To serve the Lord, and, and in spite of all this wickedness, we ourselves can be a small ray of light. <laughs> we sure can, and and I hope that by me making a video like this and talking to you, I hope that it'll be first of all for His glory. That's right. Number one, and number two, if there's somebody out there that hears this, and they're moved by it, 
that's one more or less person that we've helped possibly mm -hmm. working through the Holy Spirit towards being guided together to deviate them from actually going to a punishing place called hell. That's right. Yeah. Because if you look at the gift of God, what is the ultimate gift of God? The ultimate gift of God was to send his son down here to mankind to prevent us from going to a devil's hell that, if the truth be known, we all deserve to go to. Right, right. He didn't, it wasn't prepared for us. It was prepared for the devil and his angels, but man chooses. That's right. And man makes that choice. That's to right. Deviate from his plan, then. That's right. That's what what's left for us. Do y'all believe that we're in the last days? I sure do. I've been in your church before. You have. Right there in front of that little store, where that little store used to be. Okay. I've been in there two or three different times. Okay. What's her name? Uh, Dennis Jackson. Dennis Jackson. Juby. I've been in there. I've been in there. I know th uh, two or three different times since I've come back in twenty and fourteen, okay. and I love the way y'all worship towards all the men being on one side, all the women being on the other side. Uh -huh. um, you got your deacons, you got your your elders. Um, I I just love the whole concept of how that you you're in there dressed appropriately, you act appropriately. The whole setting is a is a righteous, godly setting, and there's no disturbances. There's no nothing out of line. Uh, like I said, everything is concentrated on the glory of God and the glory of God only. Whenever y'all have your services, well, that's what, what we desire. We want that's what that. it's supposed to be like, right? The Lord for that. That's right. But yeah, we we got an opportunity here to do some witnessing and and also. Uh, uh, share share the light with people and tell them, you know what, just because this happened doesn't mean it's the end. Right. Doesn't mean it's the end. Yes, okay, well, I hope you have a good day, sir. You too, and thank you for talking to me. What's your name? I'm Juanita. Juanita, I'm, I'm Juby. Okay, nice to meet you. And I hope to go down there and visit your church again, not, uh, not too far, not too long from now. Sure, you're welcome, anytime. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Okay. God bless. I've been to our church before. They have a very, very uh, enlightening sanctuary to where they worship God in a very, very unique, gracious, holy way. And like I said, it ain't no hollering. It ain't no, no unappropriateness going on. Um, the women all are attached to one side of the church, one side inside the building, and then the men are all over on the other side. Um, you know, just like the Bible talks about towards doing things in an orderly fashion. I think the Mennonite people and the Amish people in their, in their time of worship have been more orderly than any other affiliation or denomination that I've ever been in. The, just the way that they conduct themselves in their worship was, was um, very intriguing and very enlightening. Because it, it, wasn't no, it wasn't no show, it wasn't no game, it, it, it wasn't phony, it wasn't fake. You could tell by the whole setting of of their of their atmosphere, uh, how they conducted themselves, what was said, the songs that they played. Um, you could tell that that the whole the whole thing was was illustrated for the purpose of the holy righteous God of the house of God the way that the house of God is supposed to be observed and, and, and looked into. I'm going to go on down just a little ways here to see if I'll, if they'll let me into downtown district. That was a blessing by God. As far as I'm concerned toward being able to, uh, being able to, uh,
have a witness to be able to talk to like that of somebody sharing their testimony that way. All right, right over here to the left is uh, where the for, uh, where the corner store used to be. I see where all the power lines is down right here. Since I'm being able to stop right here. Right there's where the corner store used to be. Right there. Just a rubble, a big rubble mess. Put this back up here. Says, I'm gonna have to go right. That road's closed right there. All right, I'm gonna cut this off. Like I said, it's it's pretty obvious that they got hammered hard, really, really hard right here in this in this location. Um, I don't know that the magnitude, the power of the storm, was quite as intense are as powerful as what the storm was that hit over in the Kentucky area. But it's pretty obvious whenever you see high voltage line towers twisted like pretzels, similar towards what happened during Katrina, whenever I went to the lower part of Mississippi. Whenever you see telephone poles ripped up or broken like toothpicks, and you see the destruction of big oak trees that look like they was probably over 200 years old, basically twisted and mangled like that they was nothing. You know that you know that you know you're in the presence of something that was supernatural that was much, much greater than what the human capacity can ever even desire or even think about wanting to be like. Um, you know, like I told you all ago, one man cannot push down one tree. Um, even sometimes even ten, ten men or a hundred men can, cannot cannot uh, cannot push down a tree. So it's it's pretty obvious that the things that 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 have occurred whenever a supernatural event like this happens regardless whether it's a tornado or a hurricane, has to be done on a very, very strong supernatural level. Has to be. There is no ifs, ands, buts about it. Because the power of man cannot go in just by himself and even with others unless they have equipment, bulldozers, or unless they're using other forms of destructive devices that man has created towards being able to create that type of destruction. So sad. Coming down here, hopefully I can uh, not only assess the damage and see what, what, all's, what all's badly bruised and hurt here, in which the way it looks, it's, it's a tremendous amount of, of homes and businesses that that is uh, basically been riddled but I also have a couple good friends that lives in this area that I was hoping to be able to come and, and make contact with to be able to ask them if they uh, it was okay if they needed any type of assistance um, if uh, there was anything that I personally could do to help out in uh, in any of the undesirable moments that are that are occurring right now and this is what you're looking at here in Dresden Tennessee and I guess the reason why that Dresden has not gotten the the uh, the media attention like some of the other places have like like over in uh, uh, places up in Kentucky and even even Sandburg, Tennessee, and it seemed like I heard another place pretty close to Nashville that got hit. I don't know if I got the name of that place. But I think the reason why that so many 
media people are steering away from this place is because they uh, they don't have as much documented loss of life over in this area like they do in like they do in other parts of the country right now. Now that's just my opinion about the reason why that the media hadn't paid more attention in this area like they have over in Kentucky. But you can see right there around the courthouse that you're looking at right there, it's just total devastation back in that direction. And if you'll go over here in this direction, that's all total devastation back over in there too as well. So it's just a horror, unleashed horror that has been unleashed upon the society here that words cannot put into the into the right proper perspective other than great sorrow or great horror. Just like me and the young lady was talking there, one of the Mennonites from the Northwest Tennessee area. It's so sad whenever these occurrences continue to keep happening again and again and again to not just the American people, but basically the world in regards towards hardship after hardship after hardship after hardship continues to keep happening, but we refuse to open up our eyes and understand why these occurrences are happening. One reason is global warming pertaining to the atmospheric changes that are happening up above us. But I believe the primary reason is simply because of the wickedness of man pertaining to the sin of man that is bringing destruction upon to, its, upon to themselves, just like the Bible talks about, that as man is destroying the planet, God will come back to destroy man. And these occurrences continue to keep happening more and more and more. They're more frequent. And as they're continually happening, they're, they're more powerful. -er. And we're just seeing one horror show after another, regardless whether it's the form of fires, floods, illegal immigrants going to war with a country that we couldn't defeat. One bad event after another. And it's like, when are the people going to wake up and realize that these occurrences are happening on a setting of if you don't learn your lessons lesson will be repeated again and again and again until lessons is learned so sad all right I'm gonna uh, cut it off here. Maybe I can go in the back way. I know a back way to go in. I don't know if I'll be able to get in that way or not either. And to be quite frank with you, I really thought that this main corridor going through town would in fact be open because you got some people leaving from Paris that wants to go to Martin or Union City or up towards uh, Missouri or over in the Kentucky area that if you don't know the way around here, it's going to be very, very difficult for you uh, to be able to divert around all these obstacles if you don't know your way around. The best thing to do right now is to pray for these people. And like I was listening to a radio station and it don't look to me like the courthouse is, is hurt to the degree here in Dresden, Tennessee of having to be repaired or replaced. I think what the rumor was being compromised on was the fact that the courthouse in Mayfield, Kentucky was destroyed. That house, that courthouse is going to have to be replaced. Now I do, I am, uh, I have heard on a radio station where City Hall has been affected, uh, the water, a lot of the amenities that the city offers as well as the county has in fact been compromised. Uh, here regarding this bad storm, this bad tragedy that has hit. I have heard that on the radio, but as far as me looking right there, 
let me bl blow it up a little bit more as far as me looking at the courthouse from here it looks to me like that courthouse is is fine like I say I think where the mix-up was coming from was the courthouse in Mayfield Kentucky that's just total chaos right there total devastation catastrophic and you can see debris removal already happening right there see that big truck right there that dump truck they're already moving debris I, I guess they probably got a debris field somewhere where they're moving all the debris similar towards what they've done down in southern Mississippi pertaining to Katrina. They got to have some place to put all the debris. They usually just make up a debris field and a debris field's got to be made a certain way. You got to have certain vents. It's got you got to meet EPA standards and all this other stuff. Because in that debris, it heats up and it creates gas. As it's creating methane gas, the gas can actually become very, very toxic and can become explosive if it's not vented properly and screened and got proper netting and all the all the above. I mean, you can't just take a bunch of stuff and just go to throwing it up on top of one another and thinking there ain't going to be any type of uh, chemical reaction to all that stuff going to rotting and, and uh, deteriorating the way that it does. But anyways, I'm going to let this go. And I possibly may make another film here pertaining to Dresden, Tennessee. This is the uh, 12th or 13th of December, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, 2021 in Dresden, Tennessee, Northwest Tennessee.